So you've already looked at a select statement. So the basic structure of the select statement, I'm just showing you something a little abstract here. It starts with a select, and I've shown it, like I said, in uppercase, just to make sure that reserved words are distinct from other words. And then you give it the comma separated names of the columns that you want to extract from the database. We'll clarify this a little more as we go forward. And of course, you separate the individual column names by commas. When you want all the columns, you can just say star, or of course, you can enumerate all the column names if you like. Okay, so select followed by the column names, and then from followed by all the tables from which you need to extract the information. Till now, we've used only one table. In fact, we will be using one table for this complete lecture. Multiple tables we'll see next week. Okay. So that's the basic structure of your SQL select statement. In fact, in the example that we saw, we said, show me all the rows. But in reality, you'll be telling the system, show me all the rows that satisfy a particular condition. Right? In other words, well, tell me the first names of all the players who are taller than 65 inches. That's the where condition. Okay. That is, select these fields from these tables where this condition or these conditions are satisfied. Okay. Select from where is the structure of the simple SQL select statement. Today, we'll be seeing some additional things as well as we go forward. Okay. So now we can also do uh, control the order in which the results are supplied to us. Now, essentially, the, there is no guarantee in SQL to indicate to us what is the order in which the things will be listed, right? So there's no guarantee that says, well, supplier S1 will be listed before S2 and that before S3 and so on. No, it could come in any order. We don't know. There's no guarantee as to how things are going to be returned to us. If we do want the results in a certain specific order, then we have to specify that order. Right. So in this case, we are considering the same example that we saw before, but we want the results in ascending order of supplier name, not supplier number in this case. Why? Well, uh, th that's what we want. OK, so in this case, we expect the results to be like this, right? Because we want it to be ordered by supplier name and therefore we want Adams first, Blake second, Clark third, Jones, etc. Alphabetically by supplier name. This is what we want. How do you get it? You now just say select star from suppliers but now you also add order by s name s name happens to be the name of the field here right s name is the supplier's name and that's what you've put in here now sql although is not case sensitive of course unless you name the columns and unless you specify the column names and table names correctly it'll cough right suppose you say select star from supplier instead of suppliers okay then uh, SQL won't be able to recognize it. The database system will say, well, I don't know. I don't see any table called supplier and it will cough up an error message for you, right? You have to give the column names and the table names exactly as they are. Case doesn't matter, but other than that, they have to be exact. Okay, so that is why I said order by S name because that's the name of the column. I didn't say order by supplier name. There's no column called supplier name. Okay, so this is the thing. So the uh, you can use the order by to control the order of rows in the output. Okay. Now we simply said order by because the default is to order something by ascending order. Okay. So I could have said order by S name ascending. Right. But I didn't say that because that is the default. However, if we want something to be descending, then we have to explicitly say that. So for example, if we want it to be in descending order of supply name, we could have said order by S name descending or D-E-S-C. Okay, so that's the use of the order by to order the results. Okay, uh, now this is your turn. Uh, the query that you need to write is get me all the details of all the parts. Okay, this is of course going to be quite similar to query one, but what I want you to do is to pause the video at this point, answer the question, that is, write your own SQL. You could, if you want, in fact, rewind, take a look at the previous SQL and write it. But no matter what you do, I want you to take a shot at writing it yourself. Remember, I always emphasize that you learn by doing. Passively watching something you think you understand, but when the time comes for you to do it, you'll find, you might find out, in fact, you often find that you're lost. 
and you have to go back and look at everything. That's a time consuming process. But if you learn something, practice it immediately, learn something, practice it immediately, then your retention and learning is that much better. So that if you don't understand something, well, you've not lost a lot of time. You just lost a minute. You can always go back, review it, come back. But now you really understand it, right? So it's very important for you to pause the video at this point, answer the question, and only then proceed. You can pause the video by using the buttons, the control buttons that uh, YouTube gives you. In fact, clicking on the video will just stop it and clicking again will, will restart it. Okay, so I want you to do that. Uh, so what we expect, of course, is everything in the parts table. And of course, I'm sure you got this right. The way you would have got it is to say select star from parts. Earlier, our answer was select star from suppliers. Here it's going to be select star from parts because we are now talking about the parts table. Okay, next problem for you. Say almost the same as the earlier query too. This time we want all the details of all the parts, but we want them ordered in descending order of weight. So once again, please pause the video, answer the question. Of course, if you like, you can always skip back and look at the prior examples and so on, and then write the answer. But it's important that you make an attempt before going forward. Otherwise, uh, it may look like that's the uh, you know expeditious thing to do, but you will actually end up wasting time. Now that you're listening to it, might be a good idea for you to do what is required in order to absorb what I'm talking about. Okay, so I assume you paused the video and you're now ready to see the answer. So what we expect is now the details of all the parts, but we now want it uh, want the details in descending order of weight, and therefore P6 comes comes first. It's the heaviest part, and so on and so on. Okay, so that's that that's what we're looking at. And of course, the way to get it is select star from parts. Well, we want all the details from parts, so that's easy. But we now also want it in descending order, so we need to include an order by class. But it's not enough to say order by P name, uh, sorry, order by weight, but we have to now say order by weight descending because we want it in descending order. If we had wanted in ascending order, we could simply have said order by weight or order by weight ascending. But now that we want it in descending order, we have to say order by weight descending. Okay, on to query three. We want the supplier name and the status for all suppliers. Okay, note what is different about this query than the prior queries. The important point that is different about this query is that we are now asking for specific field names. We are not saying give me all the fields. We are saying give me only the supplier name and the status. I don't want anything else. Okay, so again, what do we expect? We expect this as the output supplier name and status. Okay, now while we are doing this, it's a very important thing uh, for you to observe that before you start writing the SQL query for anything, make sure you understand what is being asked for. In other words, try to visualize the result. If the tables are small, like what we are doing now, of course, then you can get the actual results by looking at it and saying, well, this is what I expect. But of course, when you, uh, you will actually be using SQL only on tables which are really big. And therefore, if you could find out all the results by yourself, there's, you won't be using SQL, right? So what you'll be doing is you'll, you'll think even though you cannot compute the results by yourself, it'll be too much work and the computer can do it much quicker. But you should still have an idea, a mental idea of what should my results look like? You know, what are the columns? What are the rows? What properties will these rows be satisfying? And so on. Okay, so you should have a good idea about that before you proceed to write your SQL. So in this case, we want the supplier name and status only, and therefore, this is what we expect. If you look at the table, you will find that these are the suppliers and these are their corresponding statuses. Okay, so again, this is a select query. We are fetching information, so you're going to say select. But this time, instead of saying star, we are only going to say, show me only the supplier name and status. That is, we are enumerating, we are specifically listing the fields we want, not any other fields. Again, we're going to say from suppliers. Okay, since we want only some of the columns and not all the columns, we specify the columns that we specifically want. But other than that, you're getting it from the suppliers table. So say from suppliers, as simple as that. 
Okay, so this is very straightforward. There's nothing, uh, and we have not said what is the order in which the results are required, so we don't care about it. We don't mention anything about the order. Okay, so again, your turn. Get me the part name and part name city and weight for all the parts. Okay, for every part, show me not all the fields, but only part name, city and weight. Once again, pause the video, answer the question and proceed. So what we expect is just the part name, city and weight. Okay, now when I say what we expect in all of these things, other than the queries for which an order is specific, right, order doesn't matter. So all the, you, you would still get basically the same result even if the order was different. For example, if cog came first and nut came last, it doesn't matter because uh, because we have not specified an order. We don't care what order the results come in so long as we get these results. Okay, so this is what we want our output to look like and therefore I'm sure this is what you wrote. Select part name, which is P name. That's the actual name of the column. City, weight. Note that uh, the individual column names are separated by commas. That's important. The space after the comma is optional. You can give it. You don't have to give it. That's your choice. But the comma is required. And then again from, we say, parts. From the parts table, get me all of this. We don't care about the order, so we don't mention anything about the order. Okay, so that was query four. Okay, now on to something that's a little bit more complicated. Not a whole lot complicated, but slightly more. We are introducing a new feature. We are saying get me all the details for all the suppliers who have a status of 20 or less. So any supplier with status of 20 or less is going to appear in the output. And any supplier with a status of more than 20, strictly more than 20, will not appear in the output. Okay, so that's what we are looking for. This is our original table. This is everything. This is not the output we expect. This is our original table. And by looking at the original table, we can see that the first supplier has to be listed in the result because that supplier has a status of 20 or less. Second supplier, yes. Third supplier, no. Fourth supplier, yes. Fifth supplier, no. Okay. So what we expect is this. Okay. First supplier, second supplier, fourth supplier. Third and fifth are out because they have a status of above 20. They have a status of 30, so they don't figure. Okay. So this is really what we are looking for. This is the result. The right hand side shows us the result we expect. How do you achieve that? Very simple. Select star because we want all the details from suppliers because that's the table from which we can get the results. Now we want to say I want only those suppliers with status of 20 or less. We say now we add a where condition, right? So whenever we've got a condition based on which you're doing the selecting, you add a where clause. Once again, it's a reserved word and therefore I've shown it in uppercase. You don't have to. Okay. So now we say where status is less than or equal to 20 because we are saying the status is 20 or less. So we are saying it's less than or equal to 20. If we had said status is less than 20, strictly less than 20, then we would have just said status less than 20, not less than equal to 20. Okay, that's it. That's how you specify a where condition. Okay, now remember, when you say less than or equal to, it's the less than sign followed by the equal sign without any space between them. You cannot have a space between those two. Okay, so that's it. That's how you get it. Select from where. When you put a condition, you just add a where clause and then state the condition. We will soon see that you don't have to have just a single condition. You can say where this and this, this or this. You can have more complicated conditions. You will often, in fact, have complicated conditions. Okay, so that's how you do uh, this kind of a scenario. Again, your turn. List the part number and color for parts that weigh 15 or more. Now, the table doesn't tell us whether these 15 is kilograms or pounds or grams or milligrams. We don't know. We just assume something. So we're just interested in the weight being 15 or more. Once again, pause the video, answer the question. Okay, that's our entire table. And these are the only three parts which weigh 15 or more, right? So part two is 17. It's more than 15. Part three, 17, more than 15. Four, part one is 12, so it doesn't figure. Part four is 14, doesn't figure. 
5 is 12 doesn't figure but 6 is 19 it figures okay but we don't want all the power all the details we want only the part number and the color that's why the output looks like this okay so i assume the query you wrote was select part number color why did we say p and o well that's the name of the field part number we didn't have we, we cannot write part number explicitly because that's not the name of the field p number color p and o color from parts this is the important part where weight greater than or equal to 15. so instead of less than equal to we now say greater than or equal to again notice there's no space between the greater than and the equal to signs okay because we said 15 or more we say 15 greater than or equal to 15. if we had said if we had said strictly greater than 15 then we won't have the equal to we would have just said where weight greater than 15. Okay, so here we want the names of the parts with the weight between 10 and 15, right? We want only the part names and we want the part names of only those parts which have a weight between 10 and 15 and we say inclusive because 10 is included, 15 is included, okay? So this is our original parts table and we want only these three because nut has a weight of 12 which is between 10 and 15, bolt has a weight of 17 so it, it's not between 10 and 15 this is 17 not between 10 and 15 this is 14 yes it is between 10 and 15 so we take it this is 12 yes it is between 10 and 15 we take it and this is 19 we don't take it okay so we want nuts screw cam that's what we want as a result now there are two ways of doing this both are equally correct but one is preferable this is the first way of doing it which is similar to what we have seen so far so we are saying select p name from parts where weight greater than or equal to 10 and weight less than or equal to 15. That's what it means for the weight to be between 10 and 15. Greater than or equal to 10, less than or equal to 15. We have the equal sign there in both of those because we are saying they are included. 10 and 15 are included. So that's what you get. A better way, this is correct. You can do this. There's nothing wrong, but it's a little verbose. There's a better way to do this in SQL and that is as shown here. Select P name from parts where weight between 10 and 15. So you can use the between uh, clause to specify the values between which it should be. So between X and Y. Of course, the first number you put should be less than the second number or at least equal to the second number. It doesn't make sense to do it equal to, but it's, it's possible, right? If you had said between 15 and 10, you would get back nothing. Okay, so between first value, second value, lower value, higher value. That's how it should be. Okay, so this is the correct and preferred approach in SQL to do this.